Hey guys, Maka here. Today's episode is brought to you by Red Bull again. Gives you wings. We're gonna do some shield drop practice, which is getting better. We're getting a lot better. And then, if anyone's around, we're gonna do some net play. But, I'm not holding my breath to see if anyone's around today. So, I already did 15 minutes of net play today, plus I'm going on 15 minutes of shield drop practice. The biggest thing is, again, just getting consistency and speed. Because if I go slow, I'm pretty consistent. But when I speed up, plus adding like situations as well. So like that situation, for example, to the left, Wave dash back, wave dash back. Oh, that was a really long wave dash. Wave dash back. Wow, I can't even do it. Wave dash back, wave dash back into shield. Shield drop up air. But to the left, comes out pretty fast, as you can see. So adding situations like that will probably be the next thing after I can get super consistent with my shield drops. There was one clip yesterday that trials clips for me. Did an awesome shield drop up there to get a Falco. Um, yeah, shield drops are just so valuable. I know trials yammered on about it for ages telling me I should definitely do it and I was like yeah yeah whatever like not that big a deal but once you know like you can shield and get down from the platform so quickly you feel pity for the people who don't know how to do that and the only way to get down is to like jump over you know or push down through which is slower and you can't do it out of shield so yeah I think we've still got about I haven't actually tallied it up, but it's probably about eight hours left in the month of practice to do. So I would like to get three hours done today. I think I got two hours yesterday. Because I fought I ass around the last night with that net play tournament and lost a lot of good time. So three hours today, that'll leave me with five hours. Then I'll do maybe an hour tomorrow. Because Kel will be coming home. That'll leave me with four hours, and then I got Sunday, and Monday. The so Sunday, maybe an hour or two, and then Monday, the last remaining time. Whatever needs to get done, we're gonna do it. Our goal was 50 hours in the month, and so we're gonna try and do that. I'm debating whether for next month to set my target goal at 60 hours, which is an average of two hours a day or if that's just too ambitious and I should leave it at 50 again. Though I am eventually aiming, aiming for 100 hours a month. So, you know, I've got to move it up somehow. Just gotta, I gotta be careful with my goals. If it's too big, like 60 hours is two hours a day. Like that sounds achievable, right? But then let's say there's was it August? So I got my wife's birthday in there. So right off a day there, my mum's coming up. We've got friends coming up. You know, you kind of lose a week. So it's actually more than two hours a day because there's days where you don't get to do any. So it's just whether if I put too much pressure on myself, then then I'm discouraged by my goals. So I need just the right amount of pressure. Like 50 hours was perfect for this month. Last month it was 40 hours and we didn't make it. This month it's 50 and we've already done over 40 so we, we did better than last month and we should hit the 50. So I guess I'll set it at 60. And
daily repetition of shield drops is definitely helping. It's taken way longer than I thought it would to get good at it. But then I can't remember how long I practiced it to the left before I got this new controller that has the shield drops to the left. It's also like, is this a waste of time because I could just get my controller modded so I got perfect shield drops to the right and then would I need to practice it at all? You know, the technical aspect of it, there is none so I could just focus on getting it in situations but this controller is like it's close to perfect but it's not it's not perfect to the right it's like one off I think it's like sometimes the notch is the right angle and sometimes it isn't so really I've got to be just before the notch Even though I'm going to do melee after this 15 minute session, I'll do some Fox Punish Grind. Because I did that yesterday for like 35 minutes and it was really, really fun and I felt really productive. Um, I learned some great ways to use Dare with edge guarding, and really I just like had the idea to use Dare edge guarding because I was following a fox off, I, was, I think I was trying to do a forward air and I did a down air by mistake, I did it by accident and it actually sharked him from grabbing the ledge or snaked him, I don't know what terminology it would be but then I was like, hmm, that was cool, Dare's pretty cool I wonder what uses it has and so I kind of just experimented with it a little bit and found that there are some situations edge guarding where dare is really, really useful. I also got the idea from watching Hungrybox play. So I was questioning whether or not watching pros play counts as practice. Because it's you know it's not technical, you don't have to focus heaps, but you do learn a lot. And it was one situation where there was like a fox like down here where I'm hovering now. Which usually, and Hungry Box was on the ledge. And usually that's, that's quite hard to cover if he's about to come up, like you've missed the chance to hit him on the Firefox. And so really like, you can fall back and try and forward air. Um, but it's quite hard to hit. But Hungry Box just jumped up and did down air and covered this situation where I've had trouble in the past and I've never seen any puff do that and so that gave me the first idea and then as well he uses down air so liberally when he plays and he gets Fox to do that weird turnaround animation so he can grab them or up smash them I'm surprised that Hungrybox doesn't rest in those situations because apparently that's a guaranteed rest using that turnaround animation if you like position yourself properly. So that might be something for me to work out in the future. Because like what percents does that work out on what characters? And then to you know convert that into rest situations. I definitely found that everything that you do as 
arrest situation, you can't react to get a rest. Because rest is so, they have to be right inside you, it's so quick. I'm not sure if it comes out on frame one, actually. That would be a good, interesting thing to see. I would guess that it would, for frame two, maybe. Um, but it happens so quickly, the risk reward is so high, because if you miss, you die, unless you're at like 0%. Um, so you can't just go for like YOLO rest. You really need to have practiced and seen the situation before, know the DI, um, know that you can get it while they're still in hit stun, is that what it's called? Hit lag. While they're still in hit lag, you know, so they can't act out of it, they can't shine or shield or jump out. You need to like know all these. <sighs> Has to be super intuitive. That's why like people dash attack my shield, land right inside me. All I need to do is jump rest, but I don't because I just haven't practiced it. I don't have that intuition yet. We're getting faster. We're still not as fast as we would like to be, but we're definitely getting faster. So to have an MBN and net play has been such a big motivator for me. Because it's not just solo grind that you have to like make up yourself and make up activities to do. Like you get to do a bit of that, but then you get to play against other people as well. So good. I find it really helpful to like combine the two. Like I'll practice shield drops, then I'll take it into a game and try and do it, and then I'll have trouble in the game, and then I'll come back and practice it again. And because like, you know, I might be getting it almost perfectly in practice, but I go into a game, I know I'm not getting it perfectly because I stuffed it up in this situation. So then I go back and it motivates me to practice more. Because it's hard to like, when you're getting 99 shield drops out of 100, it's hard to keep practicing it. Because you're like, what is the point? I'm just getting it every time. But then you go into a game and you miss 99 out of 100, and you're like, oh shit. I definitely need to practice some more. But also, um, I need to stop doing that, singing, to grab the ledge. I need to get better at turning around while keeping the vertical jump, like not drifting too much. Just so I can turn around to grab ledge. Because sing is risky, because if they grab ledge you die. Whereas if you just go to grab ledge, if they grab ledge, you know, you've got four or five jumps left. Four left. Depending on how many you used, obviously. Tonight, I'll probably start streaming around 7.30, 8 o'clock, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start, I'm going to do solo practice for an hour, I'm not even going to try and net play till after 9, because last night it was just terrible, and I'm pretty certain it was just peak time problems, because most of the people I played, they were having issues. People that I've played before during the day, where netplay's been fine, we were having issues together. I got NBN, they've got cable. Neither of us have anything else happening. It's still not working. So yeah, solo grind tonight for an hour, maybe a little bit more, and then nine o'clock we'll um, jump in to do some netplay.
Right, we're almost at the point where we're just trying to practice doing it as quickly as possible. So you can see by trying to do it quickly that I spot dodge. So here's the question, right? There's merit in like trying to do something you can't already do, which is, you know, do it faster. I can't already do it. Let's just practice so I can. But then there's also merit in like going slow first, getting the technique down first, and then moving out faster. So it's just like, you've got to find that balance. Some viewers in chat. Who do we have? I don't even. How do we see? Oh, no. Channel chat. Oh, maybe not. Viewers list. Oh yeah, we got someone. Hello, whoever it is. Just doing some shield drop practice. Waiting for some net play. Otherwise I'm gonna do some just some fox punish practice, some martyr style. I was listening to a Josh Waitskin podcast last night. He was talking about finding your own way to practice the art that you love. And it's not like one size fits all for everyone. Like I often have arguments with trials about punish versus neutral, about practicing punish against level one vanilla fox who doesn't really DI and doesn't tech versus practicing 20XX where it's completely random tech. I mean, completely random DI. I believe in the merits of practicing against a bot that will do the same things each time so that you can see a situation, replicate that situation and extend it. Whereas Thralls doesn't think that. Unfair wants to play me. I played him the other day, yeah? Gotta finish this. All right, we're about to go into net play when we finish this shield drop practice. We're gonna jump into net play with Unfair from Victoria. I think is this the guy that was like Falco or the guy who like mained everyone? Falco, Fox, Sheik, Ices. He's saying he'll be right back. Alright, he said he'll be right back. Once he's back, I'll join. We are again, when we play net play, we're going to be focusing on shield dropping as well as getting our short hops in. Now remember I use the analog stick to tap jump and so getting the full drift short hop using the analog stick is you know, a very particular movement and it is quite tricky. I was talking to Mercury, who was the best puff in Queensland for a time. He lived here for six months. He was from the States. Um, really good puff player. He also uses the analog stick to tap jump. And we were talking about getting the short hop drifts. And he's saying he basically, you know, has come to the decision that it's like not possible. But on that, I completely disagree with him. Because I can't 
I can actually get the full drifts using the tap jump, but it's just hard, and it's gonna, like it takes a lot of practice. I practice. I spent hours and hours practicing drifting short hops with the analog stick. Like for most people who just jump with the regular button. Getting short hops consistent is like so much easier. Cause like you gotta get your button timing down, right? So you, so you just have the short press on the button. But then drifting is then just a matter of like pressing the direction. So if you've got your button speed down, pressing the direction, you know, it's just an easy next step to add. Whereas short hopping with the Analog stick. Every different type of short hop is different. Standing short hop is different from retreating short hop. Like standing short hop is different from running and then short hopping back, which is different from running and short hopping forward. Basically like every short hop you can think of has a different movement pattern of the stick. Even like running and then short hopping in place. So you've got to learn like 10 different ways to short hop rather than just one. Speed of my shoe drops is definitely in there. This brings our short hop practice to 35 minutes for the day. Oh, which is enough for now. I might do like another 15 minutes before like net play tonight. <laughs> 